Hi guys, welcome to Make 2 and a Sims 4 speed build. We are building a restaurant and it's a restaurant that specializes in burgers and diner type of food. So I'm going to call it Diner Burg because I can't think of anything else to call it. And for us, it's going to be located in San Michuno in the Spice District because we're specifically building this for one of the characters in our Sims 4 City Living Let's Play starring the Eden Cho family. Our character, Jamie Eden, he is a chef and he aspires to own his own restaurant. So this is going to be that restaurant. Now, Jamie is a young adult sim, so he doesn't have a ton of money. So I thought that making his first restaurant be a diner or burger bar is a pretty realistic option. You could say that this burger bar exists in San Machuno and it's maybe uh, changing ownership and so it's going for relatively cheap. It's going for, you know, a realistic price for a young adult sim. I would expect that Jamie would not be able to afford uh, like a fancy type of restaurant or anything like that. And also because in our Let's Play series, we've got that other burger bar that comes with the game, the pre-built version, and that's located in Windenburg near where Jamie and his sister and friends went to university. And that particular burger bar has been having some issues lately. Sims that go to it have been getting food poisoning. So we kind of thought it'd be cool for Jamie to open his own competing burger bar, but it's located in San Machuno in the Spice District because that is where Jamie lives. And why not have his first place be literally right outside of his apartment building? That makes it easier on us, Let's Playing, because he can just walk outside of his apartment and go right to work. So the layout of this diner is actually inspired by a cool burger bar that we've been to in Los Angeles. It's called the Apple Pan. So people who live in Los Angeles, maybe you'll know the one that we're talking about. It's Oh gosh, I don't actually know the neighborhood it's in. It's fairly central in Los Angeles, but it's basically like a super old retro diner. It's like the original building and it's like right in the middle of this huge shopping center in Los Angeles. And so I feel like the original owners have somehow resisted all the many offers they've probably gotten to buy their building and bulldoze it and all that stuff. You know, they've been able to keep that piece of Los Angeles history. And the reason that we say our diner is inspired by the apple pan is because of that red bar in the middle, the U-shaped red bar with the seats all around it and the cooking station in the middle. The apple pan is laid out pretty similarly. It's got a U-shaped bar with the griddle for the burgers in the middle of it. And that, I guess, is so that the chef can easily serve out the burgers as they're made. It's pretty quick and it's also pretty sociable, like you can talk to the chef while you're waiting on your burgers. So as you can see, the diner here has also got tables all around. So in case you don't want to sit at the bar and want to have a family meal at a table, you could have one of those options. In the back, these are going to be the restrooms for men and women, three stalls each. And all around the restaurant, you've got this deck. So there are going to be more tables out on the deck as well. So a lot of the decorating choices in this diner are gonna be kind of retro inspired. And that's why I've gone for the bar stools that I did. These are actually from the bowling pack. And I chose them because they are kind of mid-century modern. By that, I mean like 1950s, 1960s. I could have gone for the bar stools that are on like metal swivel stands, but I just kind of liked these. And I also liked that they could alternate between red and blue and you've got that cool pattern on the seats. I think that adds some nice visual texture, especially given that the tables and chairs around the edges of the diner are a more pale kind of sedate light blue. So the bar in the middle kind of draws your eye because the colors are so bold in comparison. So now I'm just figuring out the wall colors for the inside and the outside. I'm going for like a whitewashed brick for most of the outside, but then with these bits that are sticking out for the entryway and the bathrooms in the back, I'm going to go for a different type of, let's see, probably a wood. Probably that looks good. Yep. That's what I've decided on. <laughs> Sorry, it's hard for me to remember exactly what I did at the time, but yeah, I think that's set. And now I'm gonna work on the outdoor seating. So we've got these tables with the umbrellas to protect the diners from the harsh sun, I guess. 
And these are just going to be like four cedar tables, just three of them out here. So guests can have the option to sit outside and enjoy, I guess this is like a bay or a harbor that San Mishuno was sitting on. So yeah, I like the idea of that. And then around the deck, I'm going to put sort of a low wall just to close it off a little bit. Like that. And then off the back entrance of the deck, there's going to be a little staircase so that people can exit that way. Maybe stroll along the harbor and, uh, you know, enjoy a little walk after they've stuffed themselves with burgers. Just shifting over one square so that I can make the symmetry of the deck make more sense around that entryway. So now I'm just figuring out what kind of wall decorations. I like the idea of this diner to have some clutter on the walls because, like I said, it's meant to be a retro kind of place, a place that's been here for a while, even though technically I'm just building it, but whatever. Um, a building that's been here for a while and has collected some history over the years. And now that our Sim character, Jamie, is going to be inheriting the diner, he wants to preserve some of that history and he's not just going to like remodel or redecorate everything inside. And also because he doesn't have the money to take on that kind of project. But I think Jamie would appreciate the character of the place and want to keep as much of the original trimmings as possible. So actually the idea for putting these paintings on either side of a menu sign there comes from a user on Reddit. I'm forgetting the user's name. I'm really sorry. I'm going to put it in like a caption here in the video itself so you guys can check it out. But I thought that was a really cool idea and I was just borrowing it. They say imitation is the best form of flattery or whatever. So kudos to that awesome builder who built a really cool retro diner. And I'm basically lifting some ideas for the decorations from that person. Now on the outside, I want that big decal showing that this is a burger place on the front. And I'm also going to put one on the back, I believe. But just, yeah, just kind of all around in the inside, figuring out the different types of posters and decorations I want to put in. I think this is a place that focuses on burgers and also on breakfast. It's a diner and a burger bar. Like I said, diner burg. <laughs> so that is going to be reflected in a lot of the decorations and the posters and paintings and whatnot. Now in the back you can see that there's another cooking station that opens to the outside and that's just because I like the idea of people being able to just walk up to the window and buy burgers to go or take them along with as they walk along the water. And that second cooking station means I'm going to need to build out some more cooking kitchen type of stuff. So I need like more counters, I need a refrigerator, I'm going to be putting in a sink as well to wash dishes and dishwasher. So I'm just right now figuring out the shelving that's going to go above those counters. The shelves are for holding things like plates and utensils, which obviously a restaurant needs. And yep, now I'm putting in those counters. So again, I want the U-shaped bar in the middle to be the visual center of interest, to be the most colorful thing in the room. So I'm going for these pale blue counters in the back here. And there's that dishwasher that I mentioned before. And now I'm going to put in a sink next to the dishwasher, I think. Yep, that works. And in a little bit, I will be placing the refrigerator, just making room for it, moving these shelves and these wall decorations. What I've added here is, I guess I'm going to call this like the specials menu. So if there are particular specials of the day, then the staff could write those on that little chalkboard there. And yeah, here we go. We were selecting the refrigerator. I believe this is from Jungle Adventures. I really love the look of that and I think it matches that dishwasher really well. The plumbing kind of makes sense. You've got the refrigerator next to the dishwasher, next to the sink, next to the bathrooms, right? Makes sense. And then over here on the left side, I've got a coffee maker because what diner slash burger bar is complete without a coffee maker? And now a jukebox because what retro diner slash burger bar is complete without a jukebox? Just moving around more wall decorations, again, keeping that kind of cluttered style. 
And this lighted column in the corner, again, I'm taking that from the Sims builder who built the diner that I was inspired by with the menus. Again, gonna flash up their name on the screen so you can check out what they've done. But I just like the idea of these lit things in the corners and in that doorway as, again, a form of visual interest. And tiling that back wall just for an accent wall, making sure that everything is lit up correctly and all of that on the inside. Now I'm populating the bathroom with the doors for the stalls, the toilets, gonna add the sinks and all of that. Now it occurs to me that to be a properly accessible bathroom for people with disabilities, for instance, you could actually make this a two stall bathroom, have one of the stalls be a regular skinny one and then one of them be a double width one, so that would make more sense realistically. So. If you are downloading this build from the gallery, that's a suggestion that you could do. I will definitely be uploading this to the gallery. Our ID is Make2TV. We've got a lot of stuff up on the gallery already. Usually what we try to do is test out the build, make sure that everything works the way it's supposed to, that Sims can do all the things they're supposed to be able to do. And then once we're satisfied that everything looks and works okay, then we'll upload it to the gallery. What I am doing here is just creating some waiting areas for people who are ordering burgers to go from that back window there. And that just means like a couple of benches, a couple of decorative things, an awning there for some shade, the menu as well, of course, that's important. And just decorating more of the outside, adding another one of those burger decals so that it's clear from both sides of the building that this is a burger bar. And yeah, just kind of doing little touches here and there. Now on the outside we've got the menu next to the door so that people can check that out when they are debating whether to come inside. And adding a bit of a decorative feel to that low wall around the deck. Changing the colors of the windows to match the overall blue aesthetic. I don't know why, but I just tend to often gravitate towards like blue or grayish blue, or at least a lot of my recent builds have been like that. I feel like the beach house that we did also had some similar colors, but it's just what I'm about right now. I don't know. I like that. I mean, at least on the inside, I've tried to go for bolder pops of color. So give me that at least. And just adding some more of these decals, just kind of figuring out ways to make the building pop and, you know, make it clear to people what this building is about. Oh, here is going to be the name of the place. Don't know what this says in Simlish exactly, but I'm going to say we're pretending that it says something like Dinerberg because that's the name of the place. Putting some neon lights in the windows, I think that adds to that retro diner feel. You'll notice I think those are like surfboards or snowboards on the walls, and that's just a nod to Jamie's apartment. He's got that same decoration on the walls of the apartment that he shares with Abigail, who is his girlfriend. So the fact that he would deck out his own restaurant with some of that personal stuff, I think that's really cute. And we've got little menus on the tables as well, ketchup for people to add to their burgers if they're not happy with how the chef served them up. Just making this area a little bigger. Yeah, I just think that adds a bit of texture to the bar and I think it makes sense and gives, you know, more places to put those menus in, ketchup and things like that. So I feel like the main room is looking pretty good. I am going to now check on the requirements for a restaurant because in order for a building in this game to actually be considered a restaurant and be used as a restaurant, you need to have a lot of things in this checklist, like waiter stations, put two at the end of the bar, and hostess stations, or host stations, which I put one in the entryway and one at the back for, I guess, people who are strolling up and want to have their food outside, so a host station outside makes sense. And now it looks like all that stuff has been checked off to make this a restaurant, so I'm going to work on the roof. Now, I think you would have seen from the pictures at the beginning of this video that the roof is gonna be pretty flat, but to add a bit of texture, I'm just putting a low wall around the edges. And later you'll see some overhang and some trim but I think basically it's coming together. I'm pretty excited to have Jamie in this place, actually running it, achieving his dream of being a restaurant owner. 
Don't know what kind of drama he'll be able to get into with owning a restaurant. We've actually never tried running one before, despite having had the restaurant pack for a while. I guess it'll be just as much of an adventure for us as it will be for Jamie. I'm adding some trim, by the way, around the outside. I think this is from the Jungle Adventures pack. I think it works pretty well with adding some visual interest to the underside of that roof area. Although I'm going to make some adjustments to it later in the video. But yeah, pretty excited to take this place for a spin. I think it's looking really cute. It's not terribly beautiful on the outside, but I feel like Jamie has been, you know, running around town, borrowing money from friends and family, trying to make his dream come true. And I feel like a place like this has the right kind of humble beginning feel to it. It's not overstretching his financial means. It's not overstretching his capabilities. It's like a starter restaurant, like a starter home would be for a first-time homeowner. This is a starter restaurant for a first-time restaurant owner. So now I'm just continuing to work on the exterior, and I think the next thing to do is figure out the actual approach to the restaurant. So from the curb, I'm adding some paving here. People can walk directly up to the door and make it as inviting as possible. So they've got a dedicated pathway there. And in the back, same thing for them. Although I will be shifting that staircase so that it's right in front of the door. I think that's the most inviting. And I'm gonna make it on the wider side as well, because again, that's the most inviting. Now, let's see. Yep, gonna move that menu down so that it's easier to see. And on the outside part, moving that sign over there just for a bit of balance to the building. Although I'm probably going to nudge it up a little bit later. Now the trim that I used from the Jungle Adventure pack, I'm just deleting it around the wooden sections of the building that stick out just to give that somewhat of a cleaner look, but leaving it around the whitewashed brick area. And now I love doing this with cars, toy cars, obviously, but making them big enough so that they look like real cars and look like customers have actually driven to the restaurant and parked outside. I don't know if they are properly to scale. I don't know if they're actually a realistic size. We're going to have to have Sims live on the property and have them stand next to the cars and test out whether they are really big enough. But I think they look pretty cute now. So I'm going to work on the customer entryways, just putting a bench outside for customers to sit in case there's a long wait for a table, in case it's really busy, that would be great for Jamie. And the entryway where the hostess station is, is going to get a bit of a counter and also, as you can see, seating option again for customers to wait inside if there is a long wait for a table. Just going through different options for sofas. And I think what I settle on is, yep, this is a good old bowling alley pack couch. So it matches the bar stools on the inside with that pattern on the back of it. And just adding some wall decorations for customers to look at while they're waiting. I think posters advertising breakfast and coffee are going to be some good choices. Going to overlap them a little bit to add to that cluttered feel. And then on the right side, Maybe these are like articles or reviews about the restaurant that have been framed and displayed for people to look at. I think that's a nice touch. And yep, over here, business cards and a little menu for people to look at so they can plan what they want to eat. Now I'm putting some finishing touches in. I've got a bit of blank wall space here where I want to put some shelves and extra clutter. And in the meantime, I'm kind of thinking about burgers and breakfast. I don't know what you guys prefer. What would you have for dinner? Burger or breakfast? Because there's something special about breakfast for dinner, you know? Pancakes, bacon, eggs, toast, whatever you like to have for breakfast. I guess that's a Western style breakfast. I know it's different in different parts of the world. But a Western style breakfast, if that's what you are used to, having that for dinner is actually sometimes a really nice treat. So if you were to ask me, I would say I'd probably go for breakfast for dinner. But if you ask my other half, you know, the person that I do this channel with, he'd probably say he'd prefer a burger for dinner. I think he considers himself a bit of a connoisseur of burgers. If he gets one at a restaurant, then he likes to note it down in like a little journal. 
and give it a rating and like break it down into the different parts like the meat versus the bun versus the toppings and all of that stuff. So he'd probably go for a burger over breakfast. But anyway, here are some shots of the mostly finished Diner Berg. Like we said, we're going to need to put some sims in it to test it all out and see that everything works the way it should. But hopefully we'll be able to put it in the Let's Play series soon. We've linked to the Let's Play series in the video description below if you're interested in checking that out. We'd definitely love to know in the comments what you think of the speed build, and also the question of which you would prefer, breakfast or burger for dinner. In the meantime, if you are new to our channel, please feel free to subscribe because we've got plenty more Sims 4 on the way. Thanks for watching!